Hey, what's up everyone? I'm back again with another OCD recovery YouTube video. And I wanted to talk about something that Rob and I talk a lot about, um, you know, when we're, you know, maybe before we go into a webinar or, you know, if we're going back and back on uh, coaching calls and stuff like that, or talking about just content to make and things that we find important uh, to discuss from a philosophical perspective in, in the community. And one of the number one things that Rob and I have noticed, and both Rob and I definitely struggled with this um, in our journeys was the ability for strong emotions, emotions such as anger, resentment, and the dire need to prove people wrong, why that is a misleading path, uh, why it doesn't go down the path of stoicism, and why it doesn't go path, down the path of acceptance, and how the desperate need to prove yourself in a way that we see in uh, political debates and uh, religious debates and debates about finance and schooling policies, anything you can think of that humans tend to get very angry about and they think in their mind, which is understandable because it's a, such a strong emotion um, and why that happens. So before I go any further, don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, please comment down below. I really like engaging with people. Uh, excuse me, I go back usually about uh, seven to 10 days in that time because I do so many videos and just comment on that. I don't really go back to the ones from a year ago, but every once in a while I will if there's a bunch of comments. So one of my favorite quotes by Dr. Albert Ellis goes something like this. Anger is the one emotion that people don't want to give up. Or they do not want to give up anger, which is understandable. The reason why people don't want to give up anger is because we believe in our minds that anger gets us things um, that other emotions may not. We think a lot of people believe that the calm route is a weaker route and, and oh, well, they're not going to listen to me. I have to get my point across. And it's really understandable why people think that because there's so much of it because so much of the herd and crowd mentality is yelling at one another, putting someone down. Uh, I have quite strong political opinions, but I have really come to a place to where when I talk about politics, although I have a strong belief in certain, say, you know, whatever the policy may be, a, a big business, I don't need other people to understand me, nor do I need other people to think I'm right, anyone. Um, I formulate my own opinions with my own basis. Uh, uh, take religion for an example. I'm an atheist. I don't believe in anything after you die. I think when you die, that's the end of your consciousness. And I think there's nothing wrong with that belief. And many people would be like, how could you with an evil belief and stuff like that? I don't need other people to understand me. So that has been a great thing for me overall in my progress with working at unconditional self-life and other acceptance. Because part of unconditional acceptance the mixture of it is being able to formulate an opinion, something that you maybe have educated yourself on, your ability to state that opinion no matter what anyone else thinks. Many philosophers have problems with this. Socrates, Aristotle, Marcus Aurelius, um, Seneca the Younger, many, did, and, and not even just in the Stoicism route, uh, Epicurus, all these other people, many people in history, Rosa Parks when she stood up on the bus, Martin Luther King, uh, and many people believe that, you know, in order to make change, that you know the, the crowd mentality is always right and that's just not the, the reality the crowd is almost always wrong um, in many cases um, look at the crowd in something such as a, a Holocaust example or look at the crowd in something such as when just any big catastrophic issue in life where people just mindlessly brainlessly followed the crowd and, and, and what that can do to a society so you know, when I'm having a conversation with someone about, say, OCD, OCD is a great topic. I have many friends in life that don't understand OCD. My family members don't understand OCD. Um, it wasn't my mother's fault. My, when I first developed OCD, my mom had a hard time wrapping her brain around it, thinking, you know, why you never had this when you were younger, which I did. We just didn't see the tail signs. I now realize them now compulsively hiding food, compulsively lying, always searching for attention and acceptance and stuff like that. Um, and we will do that to a degree, you know, as humans. I mean, I still get my hair cut. I still work out. I still wear clothes that I, I deem nice and stuff like that. So there's still a degree of wanting to look and maybe be accepted. But I don't, I don't crave it and desire it in the way I used to, which is a super important topic. Because once you think that you need acceptance to thrive, it's a problem. It's highly beneficial to be accepted by your peers and by other people. But we don't need it to live. The, 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 the words should and need are, are very, uh, they're very smoke and mirrors in a lot of way. The only thing we need is oxygen and water and shelter. Arguably, some people don't even have shelter um, and they live. 
um, they don't live great lives, but they but they live. You need water and you need oxygen. You need food. If you don't have those things, you will die. You will no longer be here to be able to listen to my videos. But you don't need to recover. It doesn't mean you don't want to recover. You don't need people to accept you or respect you. Respect is another thing I wanted to kind of talk about because and all of the things I talked about earlier when it comes to respect, respect is a weird topic because in respect, we believe that that other people need to respect us in order for us to to thrive in life. And while respect and honor and these other terms that sound really high and mighty have a lot of benefit, you don't need them at all. You might not have an, a, an optimal life, as you would say, the life that you want when no one respects you, but we don't actually need to be respected in order to reach a certain place in society. Um, it has great benefits, don't get me wrong, but we don't actually need it, not like oxygen or water. So it's really important. The reason why stoicism is so important in my life is stoicism has given me the ability to speak about my opinions in a way to where they are my opinions and my belief systems. I don't need to, to force anyone to believe my opinions. I struggled with this so much in the beginning of my OCD recovery journey. When I started to see relief, I would really force that on other people. I would think they must see it the way I do. And then Rob would say, they don't need to. All you can do is make suggestions. And if they don't listen, that's not the end of the world. So this idea that we need to prove people wrong and those those emotions. I mean, if you look at some of the biggest names out there, uh, such as a Jordan Peterson, who I love. I think Jordan Peterson's great. I've read 12 Rules of Life twice. Um, but I think he's quite radical and extreme. I think people pull to him because of his emotions and they think that, yeah, that's what we need to do to fight. We have to fight it. But we don't. That's History has shown that's actually not a good option. Um, the people who have made the most changes in life, such as you know, Rosa Parks and Martin Luther King are just easier examples. They fought for sure, but they also fought Nelson Mandela. They fought in a different manner. They didn't always put people down. Maybe they did behind cameras and behind closed doors. I'm sure they did at times and they got frustrated because they're human and they're fallible, but it was a different perspective. The problem with today is with the people like the Petersons and, and, and the other political leaders of the world is that their main tactic is manip manipulation and putting people down. This is not regardless of what I believe in a policy sense. It's just like, this is the tactic that people use in order to get their point across. And when you release that and you realize you don't need to do that because nobody needs to understand you, it is absolutely terrific. So I hope you enjoyed this video. You know, we don't need others to understand us. Um, we don't need other people to think we're right or wrong. I made a post the other day saying right or wrong is the small man's game. It really comes down to the ability to state an opinion and whether no one believes you, that's okay. So as I always say, if you're interested in webinars, we have a bunch coming up, ROCD, POCD. Um, we just had a great existential sensory motors coming up. So if you've based around any of the big ones, breathing, blinking, swallowing, salivating. That was a big part of my struggle. Please email phil at ocdrecovery.com and let me know in the comments section on some stuff you want to see covered. A lot of people have been asking about POC. Of course, we lost a lot of that content on the channel. Um, we have a lot of information on our OCD, a lot of information on acceptance, how to, how to not try and force acceptance, everything in between, why exposures aren't enough. Uh, I think it's always a great topic. So thank you so much. And as always, have a great day.